Yes, 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 yes. What's up, real car? I'll get to you eventually, I promise. Ooh, look at what we have here. Welcome back, guys. I'm Ben, and this is Kame Trick. It's a channel that bridges the gap between sim drifting and real life drifting in grassroots cars like my 240SX. And I promise at some point, I'll trim up this beard and get it looking a little better. But today is not that day. Today we're back with another DIY sim rig video. If you saw my last video, you'll know that the channel recently hit 5,000 subscribers. I can't believe it, thank you guys. Yes! Anyway, to celebrate, I decided to massively upgrade the display system for my sim rig. And I got triple monitors, big, beautiful 32 inch Kirby boys, and uh, I can't wait to see those. But before I use them, I have to build some sort of a surface for them to sit upon. And that's what this video is going to be about. Also, for any of you guys who are shouting, why not VR? Uh, the video, I'll toss in a card here, discusses it in more detail, but in a nutshell, I get crippling VR sickness and I tried to get over it for a couple of weeks using borrowed gear. It was not for me, it just wasn't possible. Uh, and triples have some other nice benefits as well. So triples are the way we're going. Sorry if you don't like it, but I would just puke my guts out and I don't need a barfing simulator. That's uh, what alcohol is for. What we're going to be doing today is looking at building a very simple flat surface out of wood again for uh, my monitors. And I don't have all the bills done. I'm in the process of building it right now, but I'm gonna guess it'll be about 50 bucks all told. And if you're seeing this video, it means it probably worked. So once I uh, finish it and I'm editing, I'll toss the number up right here. That's how much it costs, and here's what we're gonna do. Basically, I decided I wanted to build a large flat panel that all the monitors could sit upon on their normal monitor stands. That way, everything should be as close to uh, perfect as possible for the like edges of the bezels on those monitors to meet up. I know that if you wanna buy a stand, which you can for 300 bucks or so, you can get nice metal stands that use the mounts in the back and effectively kind of like wall mount them or create that type of an effect where the, the stand that comes attached to the monitor is not used. The monitors are just positioned in the air and you can like curve or adjust the angle for the side monitors. Really nice stuff. Um, but the reason that I have nice things is not because I make a ton of money. It's because I save money where I can so that then I can spend it on other things like the sim gear that I have, like the drift car that I've built over 10 years and you know, more things like that. So I'm not great at wood projects. I'm, I'm actually quite poor, but the stuff we're doing is very basic. It's very simple and very sturdy. So here's what we're trying. First, I laid out the monitors in the rough orientation that I thought they were going to go. And then I took some measurements to figure out how large the first flat board needed to be. Here's what we are looking like for the setup. And right now I've just laid out the monitors with approximately the shape that I want. And I'm going around and making some measurements to figure out what size uh, support structure I need to build and like how big the main panel's going to be. If you didn't know, when you go to your hardware store like Lowe's, you can buy those boards, I bought mine, it was a four by eight foot board and they will cut it down uh, using a large saw that they have in house. So you can get it cut exactly to the measurements that you want or you know, give or take an eighth of an inch depending on how uh, good the person working is. And basically that takes one of the hardest things out of it because when the large board is cut, all that we're doing is adding some legs to it and some stabilizing pieces. And that's all stuff you can easily do at the house with just a handheld saw. Here's the gist of the build. We're going to get our main panel. It is 62 by 36 inches. And then I'm just going to, for the moment, build a couple of legs for it like so. And it's going to sit uh, somewhere around 23 and a half inches off the ground. Um, these legs here are gonna be 22 and three quarter inches. And the reason for that is I measured my sim rig and the height right here is about 22, it's almost 22 and a half. We'll say it's 22.4. So effectively, I'm going to just barely create something that can slide over the top of this that the monitors can sit on and wrap around and do their thing. 
So that is what we are shooting for. Um, and that means that these need to be just slightly taller than this. And then on top of that is going to be the thickness of this panel, which this panel is about three quarter inch thick. So that is going to get us started. And ultimately what I'm hoping to do as well, if I need to, is actually cut part of this out so that the rig can sit in here with the, the wheelbase on it. And then the monitors will go kind of around like that. Lowe's did the majority of the work with this big board. They've already got it cut to size. So all we have to do is actually cut down four legs and that's going to get us started. I'll probably add in some support pieces after I see how it's coming together. And to do that, we're just going to make do with my 1940s saw that was my father's father's that you've seen in my other build videos. And uh, just a very simple cutting board setup that's uh, not really ideal, but I just don't have it in me to actually dedicate space to a, uh, a workbench because most of the stuff I do is like on the car or bolting onto and off of the car. So I use a very simple setup. We're gonna be cutting this down to 22 and three quarter inches. So we'll just make our couple of marks. I then use a speed square to draw that line across or just a T-square. I think some marketing guy came up with speed square, but they are fairly convenient. I'm actually gonna reuse that square here in just a second to help me make sure that my cut is as straight as I can get it with this little hand tool. And then we position the board and I'm using a couple of little support pieces to help hold it upright and we're ready to cut. So we'll just make four of these and then we'll move on to the next step. And there you go, our four legs are done. Because I'm in a hurry to put this together, I actually hope to drive it later today, I'm gonna to go ahead and knock down the rough edges with my sander, and I'm gonna be using my Dremel for that, but I've got kind of a unique end on it. This is actually a Dremel flap wheel. I did not know that they made these until somewhat recently, and I bought this to use on fiberglass repair. It's great to get into the nooks and crannies of your body kit when you damage it and need to clean it up so that you can rebond parts of it that you've cracked. Yeah, um, I think your fender is totally split in two. Really? And since I've already got it, I'm gonna go ahead and use it on this wood as well. It's a little overpriced at about 10 bucks for I think just one of these. However, it is the perfect tool for the fiberglass work. Since I've already got it, we're gonna use it. Let's get these knocked down. So at this point, we have our surface, we've got our legs, and next up I'm going to add cross bracing down to the bottom section like that. And of course it's going to go around to the other side as well so that uh, it's going to be stable. I'm only going to add it actually on three sides so that won't be there because that's where the sim rig is going to come in. But we're going to build those so they're going to be the same dimensions here. That was less than ideal, but fortunately this is a side piece, so it doesn't matter that that's going to be a little bit less than flat. I mean, it actually didn't come out terribly. And with that, all the stressful parts are out of the way, and we get to move on to the fun part, which is assembly. First up for assembly, I've got my two legs that are going to go on the, the short side, the 36 inch side, and I'm going to join them to their support bar here. So I don't want it to sit directly on the floor, which would be here. I'm gonna pull it off the floor a little bit so that I have room to run cables underneath through here. So this is gonna be the bottom. And then up here, this is where the platform of the actual desk is gonna be. So I'm just gonna eyeball this to start with and use a C-clamp to lock it in place. And then I can kind of wiggle it freely and then I will level it while it's loosely in the C-clamp. So I'm looking at this top bubble, and then we can crank this down really tightly, gently flip it over and get to drilling. And put in one final one, because pretty much everything I do, I use uh, three screws in sort of a triangle shape. So there we go. And we've got the three screws in and we're just going to repeat this process for all the sides until it's joined. A quick small note, I'm changing the length of this long piece here. I decided I wanted it to go in between these uh, pieces that are the short pieces. 
So in order for it to fit up right, I'm gonna take three inches off of that. That's the thickness of those two two by four legs. So it's coming together. As you can see, we've got the uh, side piece on and then it comes down to the long piece. And I've just got it mocked up right now. I've put in one screw there to hold it together. And at this point, we're just gonna use a square to make sure that the angle is good. Because right now we can pivot it with just one screw in. And now that the angle is good, we can go ahead and secure this side. Next, we'll repeat the same process on the other side. And then once it's all sturdy and secure, I'm gonna drive a couple of screws through from this direction as well to help hold it. And uh, then we'll be ready to place the flat surface on the top. Again, guys, I apologize for my messy garage, but uh, I had just gotten back from the hospital in no coast and basically just threw everything together. And I still am in the process of pulling the car out on uh, nice days when I have time and when I'm not filming or drifting or streaming and uh, cleaning the place up. So I know it's a mess, but one of the cool things about the drift life is that you learn to really be ingenious and try to work with what you've got. You have to get creative. In this case, I'm ready to drive the screws in to the sides on both ends, but I don't have a spare piece of a solid wall that I could put this up against to really apply some force. It'll just slide and mess up all the all the holes and screw work. But what I do have is about 50 pounds of uh, spare wheels and tires that I'm not using right at the moment. So I'm just gonna make a wall where there is none. And that way I can apply all the force that I need to get this thing together. As you can see, our support system and sort of the legs and frame for the main platform is now done, but I do have one concern. This top table back here is a pretty heavy piece, and so if I just screw it down to these four uprights that I have right now, it's gonna be held in by probably two screws per side, so two, four, six, eight, and that's gonna be taking the entire weight of this rig if I just manhandle it and go pick it up to move it, and I certainly don't want it to just rip loose. So what I'm probably going to do is mimic this structure here and run another couple of bars up along the top so that that way, instead of just having two, four screws, I'll have a whole line here that I can also put in additional screws. That way it's gonna be very well secured to both of these posts and it should not rip out. It's a little unfortunate because it's gonna to add to the weight of the rig and also I don't have another couple of two by four handy so I'm gonna to have to make another trip out to the store but I think it's gonna be well worth it in terms of longevity because I certainly don't want it to break when I'm trying to get it into the house. That would just be a real heartbreaker. Right, it's our second day and second session working on this monitor stand. We've got a little bit nicer weather so I'm able to enjoy just wearing a t-shirt out in the garage instead of the long sleeves, rocking my They Might Be Giant shirt. They're a fun and quirky band. If you're into music, check them out. We know that I have to add a horizontal piece to each side of my uprights, which is gonna hold the desk down more securely and make sure nothing rips out. We just talked about that. But uh, in addition to that, I need to make a relief cut in the top of the desk so that if you look at it from above, if this is the sim rig and this is the desk, it can actually meet up like that and get those monitors around the side of it the way that we want. And I wanna be as accurate as possible on that. So what I'm gonna do is take a quick measurement over at the sim rig to see how much room I need to cut out to be able to just lay the board in place and then I can actually place the monitors gently because nothing will be secured on the top of that surface and take a solid look at exactly what I want that cutout to look like. This gives you an idea of how that's going to look. Uh, it'll actually be pushed up even further but this will let me lay everything out and leave as much material as possible. So I've taken a look at this and I'm going to need to cut uh, 14 inches by 10 so it'll be 10 by 14. That will enable me to lay the surface down here as is and take the uh, measurements with the monitors. And here is our cut that we need to make. And you'll see it's at right angles here at the moment. And that brings us to our first challenge because I'm a car guy and more of a bolt-on car guy at that than I am a fabricator and certainly not a woodworker. So I only have a couple of tools to even do lumber and wood-based construction. And of course the main one that I've got is this and it is basically a sledgehammer, not a surgical scalpel. So how am I going to get those angles cut like this as opposed to one that's like this where you can tell that I went past my angle and past my angle using 
that circular saw. In an ideal world, I would get a jigsaw or maybe like a sawzall. However, I don't want to buy one of those. Uh, my friends are busy and I don't know, maybe one of my friends has a jigsaw that I could borrow. But um, if you're in my situation and all you've really got is a basic drill and a big cutter like me, the idea that I'm gonna try is actually to use a hole blade. So this is a drill bit that will actually make a one and a half inch hole in the wood and then I can aim at that hole and make straight cuts to it using my circular saw. I think it's always smart to test it in a place where you're not worried about the results and that was fine. So now we're gonna line this bad boy up and get to it. Action! Machine gun! Reload! Well, that was a learning experience. Normally I would cut this a little bit better because you can see it's pretty rough, but uh, I'm gonna be cutting deeper in anyway when uh, we do our final cut, so I'm not gonna worry about it for this. Here you can begin to see what I'm talking about as far as mocking everything up. Uh, ultimately, I need to make this cut farther back because I want the monitors to wrap around towards the side of uh, the wheelbase and possibly the side of the driver's head. So I'm gonna make that a lot deeper and that will also make the entire rig more compact as well. Uh, one other nice side note is I have cut these really tight, so it is actually resting on the sim rig itself there, which is going to make it more secure in general, as well as when I mock up these monitors. Oh man, this is looking sick. So just a few notes as this comes together, I do have one GoPro mount right here that I have to remove. That is actually in the way of keeping this board centered uh, so the wheelbase is off to one side right now, but that'll be easy to do and then I'll actually be able to measure on here how far up I can make these cuts. That'll let the sim rig actually advance up towards the front and the monitors should wrap around farther than the wheelbase by a little bit, which should give me some really nice immersion. So far this is coming out pretty nicely. You can see with the uh, dark lines there, I've indicated where the monitor stands will be so I can also decide how I wanna cut the rest of it. My uh, circle bit to remove the center section worked reasonably, so this is the work side. And then when I flip it over, these marks that I was trying to avoid that I still made a couple of will be at least partially hidden. Of course I want this to look as good as possible, but ultimately this is a homebrew project, so horseshoes and hand grenades, it'll be close enough. And here are my final cut lines, so I'm going to go over here, up and around, and then right here, this line is where my actual sim cockpit will go, and that goes up this way just for my own reference. So I'm going to cut it to where it sits right on top of my sim hardware, and then comes back at kind of the same angle as the monitor stand, and then finally curves out, and the uh, legs are gonna be here, and then the support leg I'm gonna add will be here, so then this is just some clearance, because that'll be running up that way. I'll probably also put a couple of holes, maybe here and here, to uh, allow for some cable routing if I need to. Working up a sweat. All right, so I've got the basic shape all completed. Let's check it out. This is going to cover the front section. So the way we're looking at it right now is if we were sitting in the rig, those kind of M shapes are the monitor bases and then the sharp angle is where the rig will sit. I also added a couple of holes here and here for uh, cable management if I even feel like making the rig look remotely pretty. But all in all, I think this is gonna look great. All that's left is simple things like cleaning up these turns and just generally smoothing this down. Then I'm gonna flip this thing over and use the clean side for uh, the top surface. It's looking pretty good, but I literally ran into one problem, which is that this bottom support leg in the back actually hits on my frame, which I should have seen coming, but I'm not great at this stuff. And so that's preventing me from pulling it in as much as I want to. 
So that support has got to go. Fortunately, however, because my rig is built at a slant, I have room to relocate it to the top and that will give me even more uh, security for the monitors and add some rigidity. So now what I'm gonna do is run my horizontal piece a bit lower so that it makes a shelf here for basically this piece to get relocated and sit on that and then support the weight of the monitors as they go across that way. Here's what I've ended up doing to take out that bottom center brace. And I decided instead of completely removing it, I would retain it and it just make a square. I've got the left side done. I'm in the process of taking care of the right. That is going to allow the uh, table to have a good amount of rigidity still, even in the back there. Here is a rough look at what the finished product could be like. A couple of changes that I want to make and things I would have done differently. I cut this relief hole, sorry for the bad lighting, um, thinking that I would have a camera right there for my pedal cam and that may work, but it's getting a little tight on that monitor spacing. And as well, I had this idea to let the rig here actually sit on the sim rig, like so. It doesn't actually touch, but it's close. However, that was an ill-advised call, I realized. Because my goal for this setup is for the monitors to hold still. Uh, not so much because I'm worried that I'll notice it while driving. I don't really notice my frame-supported uh, monitor from my previous videos. However, if I mount a microphone to that stand, like my studio mic, it's going to be shaking in the video if uh, any vibrations are going up through the desk. And if I use one of my webcams hooked over the monitor in the more typical way to set them up, if it's shaking around and it looks like I'm driving in an earthquake, that's also going to be just really annoying to me and anybody who's watching the stream. So I've got to make sure that any vibrations that the frame may experience are isolated and don't carry over onto this monitor stand because with that large top surface, it's going to be difficult to support it and absorb those vibrations, ultimately creating the same effect as a drop of water landing in an otherwise still lake. It's going to be pretty noticeable and it's going to shake the scene. So I'm going to add a couple support legs. I may make a little bit more cut to make sure that that's not going to be sitting on the frame. And then we should be basically good to paint this thing and assemble it. On to the final step, painting. I'm just gonna use some basic rattle can paint in a uh, satin black this time. I did use like door paint for exterior the last time I did a painting project on my sim, which was the frame and it like off gassed for days and kind of reeked. So I'm gonna try something that dries a little faster that I don't think is going to have as bad of a smell so that I can put this into the room and get to enjoying it sooner. One of the joys of winter projects is that it's a little cool in here. So I'm heating up my paint before using it. And I have no idea how many coats it's gonna take, but I'm gonna lay down one or two a day through the week and see how it comes out. Here we are at final assembly. It's been like two or three weeks since the last clip. I thought maybe doing the desk part in uh, spray paint would go better, but unfortunately it did not go any better. It actually went worse. Now, I don't know if that's because of the nature of spray paint or if it's because I did the frame in the summer and I did the desk here in the winter, but it's been so cold. My theory is it just really slowed down the process of that black paint like curing and finishing letting off gases because it has just been fuming up the garage for a couple of weeks and uh, my super supportive wife who's totally awesome did not want to get choked out by the fumes which I totally understand I probably would have got choked out by the fumes as well because it was pretty strong. My method for this is fairly simple after securing the corners I know that I have an end 2x4 here and then a runner that goes basically like this on the underside so what I'm doing is verifying, there it's pressed up against it, that it is basically even with the end of the table. And then I can use this board as a guide. And I know that I have the width of this board here to put in all of my screws. So I'm actually doing these all at once now that the edges are secure, but just as an example, I can come in 
roughly here, move the guide. Then because I'm doing this part of the project indoors, I will vacuum up any of the sawdust. Finally, I can put in the screw. Gently at first, till it bites, and then we can blast it in. And that's the process that we're using for all of these, so we'll just continue that and blast this out. Now to do the back support piece, and that is a 2x4 short ways, the, the sort of flatter side. So I did pick up one more type of screw, adding another maybe five or six bucks to the cost of this project. These are so short that they shouldn't push all the way through when we're done. Last but not least, is screwing down where this support comes in up here. And in true drifter fashion, I'm just gonna eyeball it. And I'm gonna do that by feel, so I'm just lining up this two by four in a way that looks like it's over top, and I'm feeling for where that is located. And basically this area here should be good. I'm just gonna sink one, I guess, cause it really isn't gonna have to do much supporting. Of course, we're going to use the long screws for this. We'll just repeat that process on the other side, and I'm going to call that good. And we're done! Oh yeah, that looks so good. I may or may not decide to paint these screw heads black, but as of the moment, it is sort of obvious rivet style, like my IRL240. All that's left is to place and hook up the monitors, and then enjoy this setup. And here we go. I feel like some sort of a madman assembling a weapon. There you have it, guys. That is the triple monitor desk done. We'll take a close look at it. The video makes it look just insane. Huge. And I mean, it is pretty baller, I gotta say. I made a little section for my PC to hide. The cutout is working great. I can scoot it up more if I want to. I can pull the monitors forward a little bit more if I want to. I do not have the monitors set up or angled correctly, anything like that yet. That will be something I work on over time, but for starters, I am very pleased with how this budget build has turned out. If you guys enjoyed the video, give it a like. If you haven't already subscribed and you enjoy the content on my channel, please consider doing so. Don't forget to share this out with a friend who's into sim drifting or who you want to get into sim drifting. And the key takeaway here is that I'm not an expert. This turned out okay. You don't have to be an expert in order to get into sim drifting and in order to fabricate your own stuff. Just take your time, plan, be patient, and you can come up with something pretty cool and pretty custom to your needs. Thanks for watching guys and have a good night. Peace.